going to read um, Proverbs 31 through, oh, 10 through 31. All right. A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth more than rubies. Her husband was, has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She says that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, and he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come, and speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household, and does not need, does not, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her, ha her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Thank you, Sophia, for reading that. Proverbs 31. Well, Mother's Day is the, the day that in our country, we choose to celebrate the, the contributions that mothers have made to our lives. And it's kind of funny. I was thinking back to all the years I've been a pastor, and I have never given a special Mother's Day message before. I know, it's awful. It's awful. I know, it's shameful. I've never given a special Mother's Day message. So, <clears throat> that said... I'm really exciting, uh, really excited to be able to, to share this message with you this morning. I thought if we're, we're going to honor motherhood today, I thought it'd be good to talk about the qualities that make up a godly mother. mother. And who better to talk about motherhood, who better to describe the qualities of a godly mother than a mother herself, Right? Sophia read Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. And Proverbs 31 is at the very end of the book of Proverbs. And we see in verse 1 of Proverbs 31, it says, an oracle that King Lemuel's mother gave to him. So apparently, this was a, a oracle or a, some words of wisdom that King Lemuel's mother gave to him. We don't know when, but he did. As I was studying a little bit about this chapter, scholars and historians say, we have no record of a King Lemuel. I don't know if you know that. There, there's no record of who this person is. And Jewish tradition says that King Lemuel was actually King Solomon. That's what Jewish tradition says in their interpretation of this chapter. Jewish tradition also says that King Solomon's mother, Bathsheba, was the one that spoke these words to her son. And she was speaking words to her son about how to find a wife of noble character. That's what scholars, the Jewish scholars say. Well, whether King the Mule was actually a real person or whether he wasn't, it doesn't really matter. One thing we know is that these words about this honorable woman 
this woman of noble character has been written down in scripture and captured over time. And these words allow us to ponder the question, what is a woman of noble character? That's what this passage describes. Well, there's four main topics that this passage gets into about a woman of noble character. Here's the first thing that it says about a woman of noble character. It says, a woman of noble character is extremely valuable. King Lemuel's mother, or Bathsheba, whoever it is, says to her son that a woman of noble character is something that is extremely valuable, something hard to find. She says it's more precious than the finest jewels. Look at verse 10. I'll give you some time if you're not there. Proverbs 31, that's where we're at. She says, a wife of noble character, who can find? She's telling her son that that if, if you find a wife or a woman who has noble character, you have found something extremely valuable and rare, something precious. She says she is worth far more than rubies. The ESV version says that she is far more precious than jewels. Now, we often in our culture place value on things by what profit they bring us, correct? So we place a high value on gold, on on fine jewels, nice cars, expensive homes. But King the Mule's mother is saying something very important here. He's saying that none of these things will be more profitable to you than a woman of noble character. This is something that will bring extreme profit and value to your life. She says that it's something priceless, something precious. Well, why is that? Why is a woman of noble character extremely valuable and priceless? Well, that's our second point this morning. A woman of noble character inspires confidence in her family. Her family flourishes because of her supervision over them. Look at verse 11. She says, her husband has full confidence in her. Her husband has full confidence in her. Another way of saying that is her husband trusts her. He knows that when she says she's gonna be somewhere, he knows that she'll be there. When she says she's gonna do something, she keeps her word. Her husband has full confidence in her. He goes on to say, and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life because she's a a woman of noble character. She blesses her husband. She brings good things to his life and, and to her family. Verses 12 through 22 in this section is a list of activities she involves herself in which brings blessing to her family. She says in verse 13, she selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. This speaks of of an era gone by, a past era where, where mothers would actually make the clothing for their husbands and children. They would select the material and with their own hands, they would sew and make clothes for their children. And what she's saying here is that this woman of noble character makes sure that her family is clothed, makes sure that they're cared for. She says something very similar in verse 19 and 21 
uh, about how this woman of noble character looks out for her family. She goes on to say that she makes sure her family's dietary needs are cared for. Look at verse 14. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. Now again, th this was written to an agrarian culture. Okay, remember that this was a farming culture. And so in this culture, you would have a certain crop and you would take it to the market. And oftentimes, you would have to barter. You would have to trade your crop so that you could be able to get a square meal for your family. So if you would have corn, you would go it and you would trade it maybe for wheat. If you had wheat, maybe you would, you would trade it for barley or, or something else. She's saying this woman... She's a woman who does whatever she needs to to make sure that her family is fed, to make sure that their dietary needs are cared for. Verse 15 says she gets up while it's still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She's willing to sacrifice her own sleep to get up and make sure that her family has a proper meal. But not only that, she cares for those that, that are not in her family. Nobility uh, uh, during this era would oftentimes have servants that would come and, and help with chores or, around the house. Not only does this woman have a heart to care for her husband and her children, but she has also has a heart to care for those outside her family. Verse 20 says she opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. A woman of noble character has compassion for those in need, has a heart for the down and out and wants to serve. Another way she blesses her family is she's industrious. She's not lazy and slothful, expecting that rewards will come to her family through no hard work. Look at verse 16. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. She considers a field and she buys it out of her own earnings. Later in the chapter, it says that, that she makes linen garments and belts for the, for the merchants. She's somebody who, who works hard with her hands and out of her own earnings, she buys a field and she plants a vineyard if you know anything about Israel, you know that it was a dry and arid climate, and there were lots of vineyards. And she plants this vineyard not only to take care of her own family, but she's looking to try to raise more money for the future of her family. She's a forward thinker. She's looking to care for the needs of those that depend on her. She's also a hard worker. She says she sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for the task. In Hebrew, verse 17 literally means that she girds her loins. What in the world does that mean? Well, they would actually take their cloaks and they would pull it up and wrap it around their legs and they would tuck it in their belts. And they would gird their loins if they were getting ready to run a race or if they were getting ready to defend themselves in battle. And what she's saying about this woman is, is that she is ready. She is willing to gird her loins so that she will work hard. She will do whatever it takes to care for her family, to make sure their needs are being met. She says her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. During tough seasons, 
When, when times are hard for her family, she can be counted on. Verse 21, her husband, or when it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. Her kids can depend on her, that, that she's gonna take care of them in difficult times. She's also a homemaker who has a flair for creating beauty. Look at verse 22. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. You know, beauty is something that God created, right? If you don't believe that, all you have to do is look at Niagara Falls or look at a simple rosebud. Beauty is something that God created. And the noble woman seeks to make her home and even her own appearance beautiful. Well, you say, whoa, wait a minute. Can you actually say that? Well, if you got a problem with that, just look at the book of Song of Solomon. In many ways, that's what the book is about, about a woman making her home and making herself beautiful for her husband. Now, I'm not talking about dressing in an immodest or inappropriate manner. Paul, in, in 1 Timothy 2.9, gave a strong word of rebuke to the church. He says, I also want women to dress modestly with decency and propriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. It's an important verse. The, the key words there are modestly, with decency and propriety. Paul was, was calling the women of, of, of this church to always dress appropriately, right? For women who profess to worship God. I'm talking about dressing in a way that, that highlights the creativity of your creator. That's what I'm talking about. Dressing in a way that, that reflects the glory of God, not in an inappropriate or, or immodest manner. But, but God has created women with, with a sense, with a flair for beauty. So whether it's their own homes or, or clothes for their children or, or themselves, God has given women that ability and that leads to verse 23. A, a woman of noble character's husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. Because his wife is an industrious person, uh, because he knows that the issues related to the home and, and family life are gonna be cared for he has the freedom to involve himself in community affairs, in issues of, of the village that they live in. He has full confidence in his wife. Now, we look at this portrait of a woman and we say, wow, what a woman, right? The, the qualities that she has, I mean, no wonder that her, her husband has confidence in her. No wonder that her children flourish. Look at the amazing things that she does. You know, as I was thinking about these qualities, I couldn't help think about my own mom. And I was very blessed uh, to grow up in a home with a mother who was very industrious and cared for, for the needs of her family. Uh, my mom was, was the type of, of gal that always had cookbooks on the top of the counter. She, she was always looking to, to create new and, and, and tasty meals uh, for her husband and her kids. When our family uh, didn't have much, I was thinking, about, thinking back to the fact that my mom sewed clothes. She, she sewed clothes for herself. She sewed clothes uh, for myself and my three siblings. I'll be honest, we didn't like the clothes. But we were well clothed. 
She, she made sure that, that we were, were cared for uh, through that way. She was always looking at, at times to try to help with the finances. Uh, she wanted to make sure that we had birthday and Christmas gifts. She's always trying to make a, a little bit more so we could go on vacation in the summer. Well, my mom was not perfect. You probably would say your mom was not perfect either. And, and if my mom was here, she'd be the first to admit it. But I will say this about my mom. My mom was the type of woman that instilled confidence in her husband. And she made sure that her children flourished. My mom's not here today, but she'll be listening in later. And, and so because of that, because of who she is, I, I want to honor my mom today. I, I want to praise my mom for her wonderful stewardship and how faithful she was to our family. And you know, that's actually the third point of what we see in this passage. A woman of noble character will be praised by her family. A godly woman's husband and children will sing her praises. Look at verse 25. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. <clears throat> She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Wow, those are some great words. King Lemuel's mother uh, turns to the inner qualities of a godly woman. He, he talks about, she talks about the fact that, that this woman of noble character is clothed with strength and dignity. She has an inner quality of strength. She has the ability to persevere and be faithful during difficult times. Maybe you saw that in your own mother. Maybe your own mother was that type of woman. And because of this strength, she's a woman of dignity. But what does it mean to be a woman of dignity? Well, it means to be a person that has self-respect, but also has the respect of others. She's a woman of strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. Wow, laugh at the days to come. Well, the only way that you can laugh at the days to come is first of all to know that you have a Lord and Savior who's gonna walk with you through them, amen? amen. And that's the only way we can laugh at the days to come. But it also means she's prepared, right? Right? The only way we can look at our future and not have anxiety is to know that we're prepared. And the woman of noble character is a woman who's prepared. She knows that things are gonna be okay because she's put in the hard work of preparation. Verse 26 says, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Her words of wisdom bless others. And primarily, her, her words of wisdom bless her husband and her kids. She's, she's a woman who teaches the word of God to her children, instructs them in, in the truth of God's word, and, and because of that, it guides them on paths of righteousness. Their lives are blessed because of her instruction. Verse 27 says she watches over the affairs of her household and, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Again, she's a hard worker that, that cares for the needs of her family. 
all these accolades, all these, <clears throat> excuse me, these words of compliment lead up to a crescendo in verse 28. Verse 28 says, her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. The, the result of, of this woman's amazing character, the result of the things that she does because of who she is, is that her husband and her children rise up and praise her. They say, wow, what a wonderful mother we have. What a blessing she is to our lives. You know, I, I had a great idea. And of course, like all my great ideas, I always think of them too late. <laughs> I had this idea that, that I would get the children of our church to uh, be on video and, and share something that they appreciate about their mother, right? Uh, share a quality or, or something that their mother has done that, that they value. Well, I didn't have time to do that. Maybe next year, right, Annie? <clears throat> well, the next best thing is YouTube. And I found this awesome video on YouTube. You, you gotta watch. It's hilarious uh, of these kids praising their mother. <laughs> Even though she doesn't even want to go on them. She just does funny stuff and occasionally tickles us. <laughs> she gives me this one note that I keep in my backpack. Dear Katie, I love you every day so, so much. I can tell my mom anything. My mom's the best because she gives me bubble gum and she doesn't let my brother have it. I liked it when she takes me to Chuck E. Cheese. She does the best scary stories. She always says, stay calm, you can do it. And when we have special dates, it makes it special days. And mommy is a beautiful princess. I love mom. I can thank my mom for being my mom. Thanks for letting me lick the spoon. And for teaching me knock-knock jokes. For always helping me look on the bright side. For making me feel special. For helping me clean up my mess. For rubbing my back before I go to sleep. Thank you, Mom. I give my mom big smooches. the mouth of babes, right? Yeah. All the things that mom does for us. She lets me lick the spoon. Oh, that's the best. Get to lick the spoon. Mm. Goes on roller coaster rides, gives me bubble gum, all the things that mom does for us. Well, I'll tell you what, husband, children, uh, if there's anything that we can do more is we can bless our wives and mothers, Right? Yeah, we can, we can tell them how thankful we are for them and for all the things that they do for us. You know, this week, I want to encourage you, especially you children, 
rather than complaining about the things that mom doesn't do for you, I want you to speak these words to her. And it comes from verse 29. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Wow. Moms, be careful. Be careful. I know, I know when you hear your kids say those words, you might, you might faint or you might pass out. <laughs> but children, I want to encourage you to say those words to your mom this week. You know, whether you're, you're younger or older, uh, tell your mom how thankful you are for her, how much you appreciate her. And husbands, you can do a better job too with your wives. The last thing that uh, we see in this chapter is that a woman of noble character has a reverence for the Lord. A, a woman that, that has a love and, and reverence for God, she is ultimately the woman that is going to be praised, that's gonna be valued. Look at verse 30. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Charm is deceitful. <clears throat> there are women who, who use charm to try to get their way. I've known quite a few of them. King the mule's mother says, watch out for these women. You won't get what you think you're going to get. It's kind of like those advertisements we see about the new biggest and greatest hamburger, right? Those amazing, you're like, whoa, man, look at that hamburger. That, that looks like something good. But then you actually go to the restaurant and order it, and you go, oh, my goodness. This, this wasn't what they advertised. This, this is something totally different. And that's what Solomon's mother's saying. She's saying, watch out for those women who charm others. That they appear to be one way, but in reality, there's something totally different. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is fleeting. Now, just a moment ago, I, I said that we should appreciate beauty, right? Right? It should be something we value. But you know, we shouldn't worship beauty. Let me say that one more time. We shouldn't worship beauty. We live in a culture today that worships beauty. But King the Mule's mother says beauty is fleeting. There was an interesting story a few years ago when the, the latest Star Wars movie came out. There, there were some people that were critiquing Princess Leia. Can you imagine that? that there, there were people that were, were speaking about Carrie Fisher, the actress who played Princess Leia in the movie. Now, let's be honest here. The last Star Wars movie came out 32 years ago. You know, let's give the gal some grace and mercy. But I love what, what Carrie Fisher responded to these words. She said, youth and beauty are not accomplishments. They're temporary happy byproducts of time and or DNA. Don't hold your breath for either. Isn't that true about beauty? Youth and beauty, they're not accomplishments. It's a temporary byproduct of time. Basically, what she's saying is, is that age and gravity happens to all of us, whether you like it or not. We all get older. Our bodies all change. And King the Mule's mother is saying, beauty is fleeting. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. A woman who has a true love and reverence for God is the one who should and will be praised. Well, why will this woman be praised? Why will ultimately people come to a place 
of honoring her for who she really is? Well, it's because of the fact that through her reverence for the Lord, her devotion to Christ, she will be a woman who blesses others. She won't be a selfish, prideful person who's seeking to bring glory to herself. She will be a person who gives sacrificial love to others. And friends, that's exactly what this passage is saying. That's why ultimately that woman will be praised. She'll be lifted up. If you're a woman here today and, and, and you're thinking about these things, it might cause you to feel a little bit self-conscious. I could understand that. You know, when we talk about all these different qualities, you know, of a woman of noble character, she's industrious, cares for her family. I mean, that's a pretty high standard. It may make you feel like you need to be a superwoman. You may be thinking, how in the world am I ever gonna pull this off? Well, I got a secret for you. You weren't meant to pull this off. At least, not on your own. One more time. You weren't meant to pull this off on your own. In closing, I wanna share John 15 Verse five, these are the words of Jesus. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man or woman remains in me and I in him or her, he or she will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Guess what, men? When it comes to being people of noble character, you're not off the hook because these principles apply just as much to our lives as they apply to the women in our lives. But here's the, the final point. The final point is, is that if we are gonna be people of noble character, if we are gonna be people who bear fruit, it's gonna be because we are connected to the vine. And the vine is Jesus Christ. If we're connected to the vine, if we have a close relationship with Jesus, if we spend time with him on a, on a daily basis, then we can't help to bear fruit. We can't help to become a person of noble character. Now, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. But the more that we abide in Christ, over the days, over the months, over the years, the more we grow to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm.